next time. Something else up here. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you ready to go down? <laughs> Feisty boy. Come on, let's go. Down you go. Come on, come on, let's go. Down the ramp. Come on. Come on. Oh, wheel. Come on, let's go. There we go. <laughs> come on. Down you go. Come on. <laughs> you want to stay on the roof? Come on. Go down. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you don't even want to go down. Come on. Down you go. <laughs> Morning. Welcome to my studio again here in northern Colorado, Fort Collins. I am trying to get going. <laughs> I got up early this morning and I'm trying to get going. I was just gonna start on my painting and I realized it's gonna be 101 degrees today or higher and I have some things to water in the garden. So. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna get right to the point. I am feeling a little overwhelmed because I have all these big projects and um, they're not getting done fast enough. I shared with you that I was trying to remove the roof of my shed and make it into a greenhouse roof and got started on that. Uh, my friend was gonna come and help me, but he got waylaid and uh, he might be able to come in September and help me. But the main thing is I missed my window of opportunity because the um, fruit trees bloomed and suffered the fate of the weather. And now I've got squirrels stealing the minuscule number of apricots um, and peaches that were on the trees um, and they're not even ripe. <laughs> so hungry squirrels. But the other thing is Stanley's house, my other big structure that's going to be wire enclosed, I'm really wanting to finish that because I have a whole mess of plums this year from two trees that didn't produce too much until just now. And so for the next two weeks, I am going to do two things. I'm going to not share with you the completion of this painting because I hate coming attractions. <laughs> As you can see from this cartoon that I did about me and my mom, I, I don't like being shown the end of something before it happens. And my mom was famous for sharing coming attractions. <laughs> and when I get down to the end of a painting, I'm doing such minute things a lot of times that the average viewer can't really see what I'm doing. And so it may look finished to them for two weeks and then when I finally say it's finished it'll be very you know really anticlimactic <laughs> so no more of this yarrow and hand painting for the moment and I'm going to entertain you with um share with you some of my paintings that I have available for sale some little ones that are affordable and some prints that I have left over that I'm going to release for a really good price. And my little friend has just appeared. What? What? <laughs> you need some company? I'm coming out. <laughs> you want some company? Oh, baby. <laughs> I'm coming out. 
You need some more breakfast? He's my pal. That's Pierre. In case you haven't seen any of my videos because he's in practically every one of my videos. He's my co-star. Okay, I'm going to get going because this is a get-go. Out, back, out, back, out, back all day long. Okay, hi everybody. It's almost 10.30 at night. And it's been a long, very hot day. I just participated in a two-hour group meditation with people around the country and even with one person from Japan. Uh, it was very powerful. Um, and I'm pretty uh, wired and I look like crap. Um, <laughs> so I'm not going to talk into the camera. <laughs> But I want to share with you um, a couple things. I have been trying to stay safe and keep from going grocery shopping often. And I went six weeks without going to the grocery store. And this time I'm going to try to go eight weeks. But I discovered I keep running out of bananas and I keep running out of potatoes. So... I've decided to, well, I froze a bunch of bananas uh, because frozen bananas are really good in a green smoothie in the morning, so that's no problem. But potatoes are harder. I like my carbs. Rice is easy to store. Well, this is a big potato. Um, you know, pasta is easy to store. I make my own bread, so that's not a problem. But potatoes, I don't have anywhere to store potatoes where they last very long. So I am trying an experiment with a couple things. I um, I dehyd dehydrated some potatoes. They're pretty cool. They smell really good. Mmm. And I figure I could just take those out whenever I need for uh, stir fries or if I want to make samosas or something. So I'm going to try that out. And I baked a bunch of these potatoes and I made some of this cheese sauce um, with cashews and all these really great ingredients, really delicious. So, I'm going to kind of make like double stuffed potatoes, only I'm going to do it a simpler way. I'm just going to show you what I did to make these fries first. Um, if This is really cool. Have you seen one of these tools? If you um, just slice a little tiny flat area on the bottom so it stands up, then you can just... Go like that, and see, it's really cool. And then you can just push on the bottom a little bit to get it to go all the way through the wire. And then it comes right off. And then you have some little baby fry shapes. Are they cool? And then I steam them for four minutes and then dumped them in cold water to stop the cooking. And then I dehydrated them in my dehydrator for seven hours. Okay, so the other thing is, I'm going to cut all these potatoes and take the weird parts off. And I'm going to just slice them up a little bit. I am going to add some of this cheese sauce. And then I'm going to freeze them individually. And when they're frozen, I will just add them to a, a bag or container in the freezer. So there you go. I'll let you know how it works. Good afternoon. 
this subject of light is in relation to the things going on in the world is quite a vast subject and I'm going to do the best I can to give you a little sound bite. Um, if you're not interested, please skip to the next section. If you are interested, I'll try to put links uh, for more information. Uh, so I will begin on this uh, anchoring the light subject that I want to share with you. After the mass shooting in Boulder in March, I created this vlog episode and in it I mentioned, you know, to, in order to deal with the stress in the world and the violence to do our best to anchor the light. And I got a really good response from people who thought that phrase was very moving to them. So that's why I'm um, going to enlarge on this a little bit. I am a student of the Ageless Wisdom teachings. I have been for many, many years. So what I'm going to share with you is based on that frame of reference. So if it's upsetting to you, um, please just skip. <laughs> Our mainstream media is focused on sensationalistic news and depressing news and scary news and we are being bombarded with this negativity but there are a lot of really good things happening in the world that of course we don't have the benefit of knowing about because it doesn't sell news you know like the scary stuff does um, I have a, a sort of interesting take on some of the trends that are going on now which are more helpful viewpoint and so I just wanted to share that with you for your own uh, consideration if it helps you to think of some positive versions of the uh, stress in the world. I'm going to do my best. I took notes because <laughs> it's impossible to get this big subject in a little tiny sound bite. Okay, so there are two really big things that I think are contributing to the commotion in the world. And the main one, I believe, is that we are moving into the age of Pisces, I'm sorry, the age of Aquarius from the age of Pisces, which we've been in for 2,500 years. In the new age, we will also begin for about 2,500 years, the age of Aquarius. While these energies are overlapping, which is where we are now, it causes friction because the energies of the Piscean age conflict with the energies of the Piscean uh, Aquarian age. Um, the characteristics of the energy of Pisces are to do with, with individualism and idealism, and it creates a sense of uh, separativeness and um, sometimes righteousness, devotion. The energies of Aquarius have to do with synthesis and brotherhood, and it's that energy which wants to bring people together, uh, have them work together in groups. So the energies are very diametrically opposed, and you will find that people who are aligned with the Piscean energy are really scared of losing their footing. They can feel their way of life sort of fading and the new energy coming in. So they're hanging on for dear life. <laughs> and this is creating a lot of the polarization in the world and the violence, actually. So this is a really huge thing that's going on, which is pulling us in both directions a lot of the time. The other main thing is um, that um, my experience has led me to believe that the world teacher is in our midst. And this world teacher has come into our lives. He's still incognito for the time being. And 
sort of waiting in the wings for the right opportunity to emerge publicly um, when we have taken the necessary steps to bring in the new time he will come forward and add his help he's already helping daily hourly by the second um, but he's doing it incognito at some point in the near future hopefully <laughs> he will be fully visible and fully working uh, with us to guide us and show us the way forward and he's come with a number of his uh, advanced disciples who are called the Masters of Wisdom or the Great White Brotherhood or our Elder Brothers. There's many names for this group of advanced men. So they are working together with Maitreya and it Maitreya is uh, the world teacher's personal name. He is the one, the one that all religions await. He's the head of our spiritual hierarchy. A uh, very, very advanced being, and he's pouring his love into the world as the masters are, and it creates upset. Um, it's very powerful energy, and it tends to divide people. The light is shining into every corner, people can't hide. <laughs> uh, a lot going on in that regard, and if you want in more information about that, there's a very comprehensive website called share-international.org, which you can go to and read all kinds of stuff. I've been following this information for almost 40 years. So, talk about anchoring the light. These two photographs are ones that were taken with my camera by my friend who was sitting next to me in the audience at the Palace of Fine Arts in San Francisco. It was many years ago. This was a talk being given by Benjamin Krem, who was the spokesperson traveling all around the world, bringing this information about Maitreya, the world teacher, and the masters of wisdom, you know, coming into the world. And he was giving this talk in San Francisco and at this talk up and he was being a vehicle for Maitreya's energy uh, Maitreya was giving a blessing to the audience and these photos were taken during that blessing and you can see they're very extraordinary and this is one way of anchoring the light <laughs> and we can anchor the light too in whatever way we can whatever way we're good at whatever way we love if you're a painter like me, you can anchor it doing your painting or through your music or your writing or your meditations or your contemplations of nature and your love of nature, or your love of helping others. All of that goodwill is anchoring the light. And this is the best way that I know to get through this difficult time there are dark forces at play, you know, trying to hold us by the throats. <laughs> Big money is trying to <laughs> choke us to death. But we have the power of light behind us and love that's in our hearts. Maitreya is connected with everyone through the heart. And this is very, very powerful. And we can use our minds, this wisdom, this light, to make very intelligent moves and stay above the emotional duress. Uh, even though I know all of this information, I still give in to the fear occasionally and want to hide under the bed and that's okay. <laughs> so just do your best. Um, stand steady in the light anchor the light and we will get through this and we will come out the other side with a big smile on our face. <laughs> but before I go, there's a couple more things I want to uh, mention that are, to me, good news. You know, the, the COVID virus has basically leveled the playing field. Um, it knows no rank, it knows no money, you know, it can't, it knows no wealth, I guess I should say. 
it cannot be controlled by money or anything. It just goes where it wants. And I think this is a really great thing that shows people, greedy people, that their money can't buy everything. And we need to address that problem of greed uh, in the world. It's also brought a lot of people together, a lot of families, and it's put us in touch with ourselves as well, which is very powerful. Um, it's, it's very hard in this day and age to go within, to settle down, to get off the TV and the computer, and all these distractions to just be still, and this forced isolation and this quietude has brought a lot of people into themselves and to get to know themselves. And I think this is a great design for and a help for moving into the new time and being receptive to the finer vibrations and receptive to Maitreya's energy, the master's energy, the energy of your own soul. Uh, I think it's really a beautiful thing. So. Um, the internet is also leveling the playing field in an interesting way because middlemen are being not needed as much as they used to. Like for me, being an artist, I don't particularly need a gallery to sell my work. I can go directly to my audience. Um, middlemen everywhere are being jumped over because people all over the world now can go right to the people that are interested in their products or their business or their whatever they're selling or you know everybody's <laughs> trying to make a living these days so um, and I think this is a really great thing because it's giving people control over their lives and a voice that they didn't have before and um, that also leads me to my other point about there's just this cry from all corners of the earth of people demanding to be noticed, to be appreciated, to be uh, understood. Um, people who've been neglected, their needs have not been met, you know, and, and not just the starving people and the hurting people and, you know, with the uh, lack of nutrition, just basic needs, you know, lack of homes and um, health care and education. I mean, we, we know, we've always known these people need our help, but <laughs> we're very slow on taking care of them because of this greed that's sucking up all the resources and the money and not sharing. Maitreya's big message to us is to learn to share. But the other people who have been feeling neglected, you know, the or mistreated, you know, the black people, the gay people, the Native Americans, the, you know, the disenfranchised, the handicapped, you know, every single person in every single group in the whole world seems to be demanding to be noticed and taken care of. And I think this is a really necessary step towards our learning brotherhood, which is the keynote of the coming time, the coming age of Aquarius. So these are really good things in my opinion, and they point to this change which is upon us. And you don't hear any of this stuff on the news, so it's good to keep this in mind when you're wanting to stress out. These are growing pains in my opinion. Um, and the last thing is that, you know, the, the truth has pretty much flown the coop. <laughs> you can't go anywhere and be sure you have the truth about anything, which I find <laughs> pretty funny, actually, and frustrating at the same time, because you don't know on what to count, you know? Um, so many people are manipulating the airwaves and the computer waves and the, you know, the mass media. It's just insane, really, trying to figure out what to believe. Um, we have so many big decisions to make and we just don't know where to turn. 
And I think that's a beautiful thing because what it's doing is helping us develop our intuition, which I think is also a big step on the spiritual path is to develop this inner knowing, this inner intuition, and to not rely on outer signs and outer information is just to, you know, meditation. This is why I, I always promote meditating because it, I believe that all of our answers are within and we just have to learn to tap that inner resource. And so I just think this is a great opportunity to tap your inner knowing and, and learn to figure it, um, some of these things out by just going within because there's a big bunch of knowledge in there and wisdom and creativity so let's see what else I got <laughs> I'm almost at the end you can go to um, read some articles I wrote there's 10 I think 10 or 12 10 articles I wrote on this subject of the world teacher um, and they're illustrated and they're entertaining and it's called the Oh My God series. It's OMG series dot something. I will, I will find it. Um, I'll put the link. So thank you for listening. If you've gotten this far. <laughs>